Hey, welcome back to Object Oriented Programming using Java. Today, I'm going to continue refreshing your memory on syntax nuances in Java. And we're going to go into branching and then looping. I'm not going to spend too much time on it because, as I told you, if you took my course on C, which is, uh, by the way, it's free, you can pretty much pick up all the syntax rules from that course. So I'm, I'm just going over this as a as a favor to all the people that have, are new to the channel but again I don't want to waste too much time because I want to get to the object oriented part of the course which is what this course is really about okay so let's take a look all right so if you see this here we're on the replica compiler I'm just gonna make this public so I have it and then we're still gonna be starting in our main eventually we'll gear away from that and we'll start creating our own class files so simple example here for this specific lesson is we're going to do branching so as you know in c plus plus let's assume that we have a variable we call it hours we'll just play a value like that in in java it's it's the same syntax as in c plus plus so if hours is greater than 40 we can do something where we can print system dot out dot print line hours greater than 40. So you still have the same format where the keyword comes in before with the parentheses. And then in here, you can have a Boolean expression. Remember, you could have a Boolean expression that will eventually evaluate to a true or a false. So if we run that, <clears throat> obviously this is not going to return and it's not going to print anything. But if I change the value of this to 60, 600, let's run that. And notice on the left, when I compiled, I have a class file here. So that is my class file that is being executed. So let's take a look. Great. So you see that it did compile and it says hours greater than 40 because this was satisfied, this condition. Remember, the only time this condition is satisfied is when it is true. The else is not different, not any different. We can say else. And then you have a compound statement here. And then you can put in your condition in here as well. So that doesn't really change. Let's take another look at another example. If we were not going to do an if else, we can also do a switch. And same concepts where you have switch and then you have a expression here. Maybe it's got to be an integer. So we'll have hours. OK, so and then we'll say and we'll say if case is 20 colon we'll say system dot out dot print line 20 hours we'll put a break and then we also have a default where we can say system dot out dot print line unknown hours don't match Okay, so as you see, very similar to C++, you have a switch statement, switch case. You have an integer variable here that you can compare against each case, so case 20. And then you don't have to have a break. We can omit this and we can say case 30, right? And actually I can put this on top and I don't really, I don't have to have a break. So that's not really, that's not required. There's other languages that are, it is required, but in Java, it's not, it's not. So this is not actually going to do anything. But if I change this to 20, there you see that it does match with 20 and I don't need a break there and it'll just print out system dot out dot print line 20 hours and the break. So the break allows us to, once it hits a case, 
it'll break out of the switch case. Now let's let's look at some technical terms in terms of Java. So what is this thing called? This thing is called the controlling expression. And it it should it should be an int. So if you see that I made this a double, it gave me an error, right? Just like in um, in C++. So the controlling expression has to be an int. These things are called case labels. And that's the technical term for this in terms of the switch case statement. So you have your controlling expression and then basically you will type in your case labels whenever you want to match any cases. And then you can overlap each case if you don't put a break in there and you want multiple. So it, this is kind of this is similar to saying or right if case 20 or case 30, then we can do that. Right. And we learned that in uh, in C++. OK, so that covers branching. OK, now obviously there's a lot more things you can do with an if statement. You can call functions within an if and you'll see that soon as we come up into the object oriented part of the course. But for now, we did a little bit of a comparison. And again, uh, this is covered in more detail in introduction to programming using C++ in my YouTube course. And on the next video, what I'll go into is a brief brief overview on loops in, in Java. And again, I'm just going over syntax for those of you that are new to the Java language. You can run through these these videos pretty quickly and get up to speed on the syntax at least. Thank you.